This would be great. Thank you. <clears throat> Ta-da! What's this for? Because I love you. Not too late to go right back to the station, you know. Listen, anytime you want to leave, night or day, you call me. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Expected. Stay until morning. You'll find a room prepared. Mrs. Pram will attend to your needs. Wait.
Dr. Keaton. experienced and, and, and I have excellent references my son has driven off three other professional and highly qualified nannies in the last four months what makes you think that you can succeed where they failed well, I, I happen to specialize in working with children that are challenged I grew up with four brothers I don't know I please just give me the month's trial period, and then we'll see. Please. All right. But you won't get very far as long as you see Andrew as a challenge. He studies on his own, and he is best left to be by himself as much as possible. I am not to be disturbed, except in emergencies, Mrs. Pram. Dr. Keaton, um, one other thing. What are the custody arrangements? Do, does Andrew spend time with his mother? Or... Yes, sir. Please come up here. Andrew's mother is dead, Miss Guinness. Please do not speak of her again. Mrs. Pram will take care of you. Please wait for her on the landing. be the new nanny. <sighs> Haven't you been taught to knock before you enter a lady's room? You're not a lady. You're an employee. I most certainly am a lady, and I expect to be treated like one. You stay here. My name is Elizabeth Guinness. My friends call me Liz. You must be Andy. Andrew Philip Albert Keaton. The Albert is for Einstein. You may call me Master Andrew if you wish, but Andy is out of the question. There. I'm decent, but I'd like to get dressed properly. Then I'll make you your favorite breakfast and we can get to know each other, okay? Can I watch? I've only learned the female anatomy from books and internet searches. I've never seen an adult female naked before. Really? Well, you're not going to see one now. Skedaddle. I think I'm going to call you nanny number four. Why? Because you're going to go away like the other three. I thought that was a closet. It's kind of like a big closet. It's where I'm stored. Breakfast in five minutes, OK? Mrs. Pram goes to the supermarkets on Wednesday mornings. I don't think she'll be very pleased with you using her kitchen without her permission. I think she'll get used to it. Here. Napkin. Napkin. Where? where? Right-hand drawer over there. Thank you. You look different with clothes on. 
Don't you have any jeans and sneakers? Of course, but I don't like them. Why? Here. I thought you could show me around. Perhaps we could go riding. Now, those clothes might get dirty. I hate horses. Besides, I'm much too busy. Father left for Geneva this morning, and I want to finish reading the Almanac before he returns. You're going to finish the Almanac before he returns? Yes, Father read the phone book when he was three. Well, he didn't say anything to me about a trip. He didn't tell me either. I downloaded his computer scheduler. He didn't say goodbye to you? No, Father has no time for that kind of stuff. What kind of stuff? Unscientific stuff. You should be wearing your uniform, you know. Nannies wear uniforms. Well, this nanny doesn't. So, I guess it's just you and me, huh? We're not alone. She's here. Who? Mrs. Bram? No. Well, who else lives here? Mother. Andy, your father told me your mother passed away. She's still here. There are 36 deaths by snake bite reported every year in the continental United States. Now, how do you know that? Just download the insurance company's mortality tables. I thought you said you knew about computers. Well, I do, but I'm not as morbid as you. water will do to a scientific calculator? This is a very delicate instrument. Shake, then you grasp like that, and then you slide it and you grip it, and then you get your thumb here and that, and then you do like this, you make a bird thing, you fucking shh, and then you pull out your gun, you go Poof. and then you blow the smoke from your gun, Poof. stick it in your holster. It's really cool. What do you think? I think it's silly. And I also think you'd do much better if you read one or two of these. Read this one first, and then this one. And I'd advise you to get a pen and a piece of paper because they have a number of equations in them. Did it scare you? Did what scare me? When the window crashed open. Well, it woke me, but it was just a gust of wind. How did you know about that? It was her. Who? The ghost. What ghost, Andy? My mother. You're nowhere near as beautiful as she is. Of course I'm not. Do you talk with her? No. Is she scary to you? Look, don't do the shrink stuff on me, okay? It doesn't work. She's a ghost, okay? She doesn't want you here. My mother was murdered. Ask father. Do you think Dr. Keaton will be back soon? Doesn't tell me his schedule, Miss Guinness. Have you been here long, Mrs. Pram? 
ever since Dr. Keaton was a boy and went away to school in England. But I took care mostly of Blaine. So you knew Mrs. Keaton? Everybody knew Alicia Keaton. How did she die? She fell from the East Tower. Oh, my God. Was there an inquest? Dr. Keaton is a very wealthy man, a famous scientist. People like to gossip about him. So what was the verdict? They called it a suicide. How old was Andy? I mean, what happened to him? Andy was three. He went away to live with Alicia's parents. They died in a boating accident six months ago, and he came back here again to live with his father. Poor little boy. Mrs. Pram, how have things been between the... I'm sorry. Good night, Mrs. Pram. See so you found the library. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <clears throat> it's a beautiful room. I'm afraid I can't take credit for it. Generations of Keaton women have conspired to make this room what it is. Would you like something to drink? Oh, no. No, thank you. So... How was Geneva? Geneva was a hotel room, a university conference center, and an airport. Like any other scientific meeting, only this time with chocolates and cuckoo clocks. <laughs> um, is, is it okay, uh, me being here? Well, I'm generally not in here till after midnight. I doubt it will be in each other's way. No. So... How was your trial by Andrew? Was it a test? Well, my schedule has nothing to do with your responsibilities. No, it was good. Andrew seems to think that his mother was murdered. I thought I told you not to mention his mother. You did, I'm, I'm sorry. I suppose his grandparents told him. They despised me. Why? Because they believed that I did it. Why did Andy go to live with his grandparents? 
Because they wanted him and I didn't. It was as simple as that. Until they capsized their sailboat and then I had to have him. How do you feel about him now? If you'll excuse me, I'd like some privacy. I have a lot of reading to do. Of course. Good night. Good night. Guinness, don't worry, I don't kill nannies. Andy, would you take this up to your father? No. Well, please, you're going that way. I don't want to disturb him. Well, Andy, he has to eat, please. Can you manage? Yes. Why did Alicia's parents tell Andy his mother was murdered? They never accepted that Mrs. Keaton could take her own life. Yeah, but didn't they understand what it could do to Andy? breakfast. Uh, thank you. Look, I'm real busy right now. We'll, uh, we'll talk later, okay? I'll come down for dinner. Yes, father. Uh-oh. They don't sound like very happy feet. Andy. What happened? What happened? It's all your fault! You made me go up there. I knew I shouldn't have. Mother's right about you. What on earth happened? Andy is crying his eyes out downstairs. Now, you've been gone for two weeks. Can't you give him a moment of your time? Does this constitute an emergency? Is there some kind of problem? Well, yes, I think there is a problem. Your son, Andrew, thinks his mother is a ghost. Now, I can't bring him back from that without your help. If you can't accept the terms of your engagement, you are free to leave. I don't understand you. Miss Guinness. You know what I do if I reach a conclusion that doesn't make any sense? I re-examine my premises. He's not a problem in physics. He's a little boy. What has made you so cold? A ghost, Miss Guinness.
I thought you hated horses. Hello. Oh, he's beautiful. What's his name? Her name is Amber. She was my mother's favorite. Have you ever ridden her? No. Well, you know, I love to ride, so maybe we could go out sometime. 120 Americans were rendered quadriplegic last year. There were 18 fatalities. Is that a yes or a no? You ride her. It's Uncle Blaine! U.S. Genuine Army Surplus. Picked them up in a junk shop in Barbados. They work. I think they'll need some fiddling, but I thought you'd like them. Your father and I had the same pair when we were kids. Of course, Richard took them apart, and we never could get them to work again. They're great. Thanks, Uncle Blaine. They're terrific. Hi. Well, hello. Blaine Keaton, official family black sheep. This is Jillian Zale, my friend. Hi, care for a drink while I'm pouring? Oh, no, thank you. I, I'm Liz Guinness. I'm Andy's. She's my new nanny. Well, my brother's taste in nannies has definitely improved. What are they, Andy? Walkie talkies. If I replace the induction coils and the modulator circuits, they should be effective anywhere in the house. So, where is the famous man? He's up in his office working. Should I send word that you're here? My dear girl, he knew we were here before you did. Hi. What a nice surprise, Jillian. I thought you were going to spend the summer at the Cape. Oh, Richard. How could I stay away from you? <laughs> Blaine. Richard? Oh, it's great to be back in the country. I'm so sick of the city. I have a hankering to ride your horses, Richard. Oh, please do, Jillian. They could use it. I've not had time to ride lately. Why don't we go tomorrow morning? I can't. My publisher will kill me if I don't finish my manuscript on time. Oh, you're a writer. And I am his muse. Isn't that right, Blaine? <laughs> I must say, I was surprised to see how happy Andrew was today. Big change from the last time I saw him. Well, we have Miss Guinness to thank for that. She's working wonders with him. Well, she certainly is a step up in the nanny department. Makes me wish I were eight again. Still, better late than never. If you'll excuse me, it's been a very long day. And Andy gets up very early. Good night. Liz? Liz. Are you really going to bed, or were you just choking on the tension in there? They don't like each other very much, do they? That's the understatement of the year. Well, How about you and I having a drink? OK. OK. <laughs> How long are you staying for this time? Long enough to finish my manuscript? Fine. Then just keep out of my way. Richard, I want to sell the estate. I've told you. Just give me time, and I will buy you out. I'm not prepared to wait that long. I want to sell it now. Oh, don't be so absurd. This house was built by our great-great-grandfather, if you hadn't forgotten. No, I haven't forgotten as much as I would like to. Do you really think this is an appropriate place for Andy to grow up in? Oh, no, no, Blake. Don't question what I do for Andrew. Your rules, your house, everything's got to be your way. You're damn right. No wonder Alicia was so unhappy. How dare you? You know, I'd have thought you'd have been ashamed to show your face. I have nothing to be ashamed of. Don't mind Blaine. No one else does. He's not very subtle, is he? He just can't imagine a man and a woman being alone in a place like this and not actually sleeping together. So are you? Sleeping with Richard? No. I'm sorry. 
Blaine must be rubbing off on me. Cheers. Cheers. So, you like to ride? Oh, yes. Especially these horses, they're so good. Do you ride? Mm-hmm. I, I grew up with horses. Really? Well, we'll have to ride together sometime. Oh, I like that. I, I don't understand why Dr. Keaton keeps them. I mean, he never goes near them. Alicia loved them. And they're part of the museum. Must have been very difficult for Dr. Keaton after she died. Depends on what you mean. Look, Alicia was my best friend, but she was no saint. She liked two things in life and used one to get the other. Money and men, and in no particular order. Really? Mm -hmm. But she always came back to Blaine before and after her marriage. Why did he marry her? Because he loved her. She really was quite beautiful. That didn't take long. Did my father kill my mother? I don't think he could do a thing like that. So you're not leaving then? No. I told you I'm going to stay. Besides, I quite like it here. You're not scared of her? Andy, there's no ghost. Now, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. If they do, I don't wear your shoe. I'm 
sorry. For what? For scaring you. I made your window crash open. You did that? Yeah. How did you do that? I, I, I can't tell you, because you'll tell all the other nannies, and then it won't work anymore, because I won't be scared. Oh, you can't tell me, can you? Well, I think no. I'm just going to have to <laughs> <laughs> tell you tell me exactly how you did it. Do you, do you give up? Do you give up? Do you give up? Yes, yes, okay, yes, tell me yes. how. Don't you me. <laughs> I put magnets in the window frames, and I used a massive electromagnetic pulse to open and close the windows. Not an electromagnetic pulse. <laughs> Not an electromagnetic <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> night, night. See you in the morning. Good night, Liz. Who's that? Oh, sorry, I I fell asleep. I'm I'm going. Is Andrew all right? Well, he was very upset. He's asleep now. Good. Look, I I'm very sorry about that scene in there. My brother and I have some unresolved issues. It must all seem pretty pathetic. Dr. Keaton, may I? Hmm. I think you should know, tonight Andy asked me if you murdered his mother. Did he? Well, I, I said I didn't think so, but... I appreciate the vote of confidence. trying to find the liar in you. But I just don't see it. Really? You're one of the few that doesn't. I was lucky enough to be married to a man who didn't lie. So I... I think I know what to look for. I didn't know that you were married. You never asked. Are you still married? No. He died. I'm sorry. I'm becoming a little clumsy. <laughs> That's OK. I don't understand you. Now, he's, he's such a wonderful little boy. He's bright. He's sensitive. Why do you keep pushing him away? I provide him with everything that he needs, the best that money can buy. Yeah, but he needs love and, and affection. That's what I hired you for. Doesn't it bother you? He's your son. I provide for him. But he is not my son. go on a picnic dressed like that. I can dress any way I want. You do. I dress appropriately, and so should you. Put on your jeans and sneakers. All right. On condition that you wear your uniform. And don't forget the tie.
well. And I thought you were going to be working on your manuscript this afternoon. Well, Julian convinced me that it'd be more fun to go writing. Oh, yeah, fun. The story of your life, Blaine. If you could lighten up a little bit, big brother. Go to hell. Which is just further than the real. Andy, it's your father. Hi. Hello there. Hi. I see we're playing truant this afternoon. And you, Miss Guinness, are looking very official. Well, I'm... Um, I lost a negotiated settlement. It's a one-time only event. Oh, this is good. May I join you? Oh, sure. Andrew, I'm very sorry for what happened last night. How can you and Uncle Blaine always fight? <sighs> Andy, why don't you tell your father what you were just telling me? Well, go on, Andy. Well, what I was saying was, um, at the moment that the black hole is formed, time freezes on the event horizon, and the last photons of light that escape after the black hole is formed are frozen in that moment. It's not on the event horizon, Andy. It's an infinitesimal distance above it. We wouldn't detect time-frozen photons if they were at the horizon. Uh, what? Well, why don't... Why don't you explain the difference to us well, so... You have to understand, there are no margins for imprecision in science. Andy. Andy! Don't call me that! Only Liz can call me Andy! Only Liz! Why did you bother to come out here? I was curious. I couldn't imagine Andy, Andrew, enjoying all this. Oh, you were curious. Well, he's a child, and he, he needs to learn how to play, how, how to enjoy sentiment and emotion. Miss Guinness, it seems that you are a bit of a romantic. What is that supposed to mean? It means that logic and reason play no part in your makeup. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm the most logical person that I know. I'm sorry if I ruined your picnic. He has to learn. Dr. Keaton. You go to him. Please, just make it up to him. Invite him to your lab tomorrow. It doesn't have to be for long. I, I know he'd love to see you working. Please. I don't know how you can say he's not your son. You're exactly like him. Pretty picture, don't you think? Aren't 
ghost, Sandy. Andy, you're right. There was a tree tapping at the window. Yeah, power's off in the whole house. Oh. Um, well, uh, why don't we go down to the library? Uh, at least we know there's a fire there. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Can't work like this anyway. Good. I'll go and put on a robe. I'll see you down there. Still scared? No. Good. Let's go. Wake all this time. You snore. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> it's very relaxing. Power's back on. Do you think you could carry him up to his room? Every father should try it at least once. to see why he screamed. We're carrying him upstairs. <laughs> he won't forget. He was asleep. No, he wasn't. Whether or not I killed my wife. I wasn't even thinking about that. What then? What you have to understand is... I've known real love, Richard. And I won't settle for anything less. I can't. I'm sorry.
I'd better saddle up Augustine. Amber doesn't like strangers much. Oh, she'll be all right. I'll just change into my riding gear. Thank you. You're very brave taking Amber for a ride. Alicia was scared stiff of her. Thanks. Poor Andy. Can't say I'm surprised he has scared off three other nannies. So you think he did it? Of course he did. Why would you think otherwise? I don't know. It just seems really odd. I thought we were really getting along. You told Richard about it. No. No, not yet. I... I want to work it through with Andy. Mm. Be careful. She's a sly one. At least it's the only one she ever let ride her. I think I'll be okay. So where's Andy? He's with his father in the lab. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. They're making progress. You're quite the nanny, aren't you? Are you off somewhere? Off to plead for another deadline extension on my manuscript. Or if not, to sell my car. You'd sell your car? Actually, no. I think I'd rather be the only homeless person in America sleeping in a 1924 Derrick. I don't understand how you can be broke. I mean, you seem to be doing pretty well to me. Yes, well, appearances can be deceiving. Blaine, I, um, I don't know what you make of this, but I, I found it in my room. You don't belong here, so you'd better leave, Alicia. Do you think Andy wrote it? Well, I think that we can be quite certain that Alicia didn't, that's for sure. Did he do this sort of thing with the previous nannies? Yes, but he didn't like them. He likes you. Have you shown that to Jillian yet? Yeah, she she thinks it's Andy. Does she? My guess is that she probably wrote it. What? Jillian has been in love with Richard for years. She sees the way that Richard looks at you. And I don't think she likes it very much. I thought you and Jillian were an item. No, we're just convenient, like an old habit. She tends to hang out with me in between affairs with rich married men. And all things being equal, I don't like coming up here by myself. Jillian says you were in love with Alicia. She speaks the truth in the instance. So you both were, you and your brother? He never loved her. He only married her to get at me. How can you be sure? I base my theory on the fact that he killed her. Testing, testing, one, two, three. 1,618 Americans every year undergo plastic surgery for purely aesthetic reasons. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. 49 Americans are murdered a day, many of them by people they know. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Andrew, can I leave you in charge of the lab for the afternoon? Yes, sir. Good. I'm going to take one of the horses out for a ride. You, Father? 
don't sound so incredulous, young man. I used to be a reasonably good rider before you were born. Maybe I have not forgotten how. Come on. How are you feeling? I remember falling. You've had a concussion. You were very lucky. It wasn't that serious. You could have been killed if you hadn't been wearing a helmet. Where's Richard? Richard? He asked me to sit with you. Thank you. Julian, would you mind leaving us alone for a moment? No, of course not. Thank you. Liz. Hi. How are you feeling? I would appreciate it if you could leave just as soon as you've recovered. Are you firing me? Or shall we say that I won't be requiring your services anymore? But what about Andy? I'm making arrangements for Andrew to go away to school. I am considering an excellent establishment in New Hampshire. Why are you doing this? Because it is my prerogative. And I am not prepared to discuss it. promised you wouldn't leave. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. 
Is it because you fell off Amber? No. No, it has nothing to do with that. Your father has decided it would be best for you to go away to school. Why did you decide that? I don't know. You'll have to ask him yourself. I don't want to go away to any school. I don't want to go either. But you're going. I'll email you. Hmm. How do you know that? I know who did it. Who? She'll hear you. Andy who? Mother. Where's the saddle? Father took it in the car this morning, early. So, you're still here. Where's the saddle? What saddle? The one you took to town. The saddle I was riding on. The saddle that got cut. How did you know that? Andy told me. I just took it over to the sheriff. Get in. Look, if you don't believe me, here is the receipt. Received one riding saddle, brown English for Dr. R. Keaton, for evidentiary purposes. You see it signed, Sam Gedding, Ralston River County Sheriff. Why didn't you just tell me? Because if I had, I knew you would never leave. Liz, I was scared for you. I was afraid something like this might happen again. So please, do get in. Sending you away like that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm very sorry. You must never lie to me like that again, okay? Now, I am a grown-up. I don't need to be protected from the truth. And I'm not leaving. There, you see? Leave now. Liz, somebody tried to kill you. Somebody who knew you were going to ride Amber. Richard, everyone knew I was riding Amber. <laughs> well, that narrows it down. How did Andy know the girth had been cut? I thought you told him. Me? No. I think I'm going to have a word with him. Oh, no. No, that's not frightening him any more than he already is. I could take him camping. Camping? Yeah, I used to go with my brothers all the time when I was a kid. It's pretty easy to talk when you're lying in your sleeping bag staring at the stars. I think he needs to talk. Mrs. Prem says you're not leaving. That's right. Really? Really. Does that mean I don't have to go away to any school? I think so. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. I got all this stuff up, and I thought to celebrate, we could go camping. What do you say? Camping? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Go and get ready. Well, you look like you're feeling better. I am. Go and get ready. Long pants and long sleeves. Well, you know, my hooded ski suit and boots would afford me very good protection. Andy, it's the middle of August. See you later. We're going camping, Jilly! Yes! Oh, camping, how quaint. What brought all this on? I think you should know. My fall, it wasn't an accident. Somebody cut the saddle girth. What? How could anyone do that? Well, I don't know. Richard's looking into it, but we're playing safe and getting out of the house for the evening. I don't blame you. Why don't you come to the city with me? We'll have fun. You'd probably be safer there anyway. Oh, I can't. I, I promised Andy I'd take him camping. Anyway, we'll, we'll be okay with Richard. Will you?
Last chance. I'll be fine. Are you ready, Liz? Oh, hi, Julian. You off. Safe trip. Where's Andy? He's looking for a sleeping bag. Oh, good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> a little bit more. My brothers and I used to take turns telling ghost stories around the campfire. <laughs> Do you want to go first, Andy? No. Oh, come on. You told me a kind of ghost story today when you said the ghost of your mother cut my saddle girth. You shouldn't have said anything. I had to. Liz could have been killed. I know. Who cut it, Andy? We have to know. I already told you. My mother. Oh, come on now, don't be silly. Your mother has been dead for five years. Who else, then? You don't know? No. Then how did you know it had been cut? I locked the saddle in the tackle room. I divert your email. You what? I hacked into your email account. I read the letter you sent to the sheriff about the saddle. Andy, my email has an encryption algorithm I wrote myself. It wasn't that hard to hack. How long has this been going on? I started right after I came here. Why? I didn't you know what you were thinking. You didn't talk to me very much. Sorry, Father. Sleep. Well, at least one good thing has come out of all this. I feel so very much closer to Andy. <laughs> Diverting my email. <laughs> Chip off the old block. Huh. I'm not sure what I feel about that anymore. A year ago, oh hell, three weeks ago, I couldn't have imagined doing any of this. I have you to thank for that. Stay here. Keep your heads down. I'm going for the car. No, no. No, it's all right. Don't worry. Whoever it is seems to be a lousy shot. That wasn't her, was it? That was somebody real. You're okay. Are you sure? Mother's really dead. Yes. So she can't come back and scare anybody or, or even watch anybody, right? No, she can't. Good night, Liz. Good night, darling. Where'd you say they came from? The North Ridge. But I can show you the exact spot in the morning when it gets light. Oh, it's most likely a headlamp or some damn fool who couldn't hit a barn door if it was moving. 
No, it's not hunting. That's plain murder, taking a deer like that. No, Sheriff, I don't think it was a hunter. I think it was my brother. Why? Hello? Oh, there he is now. Blaine. Is everybody all right? Why shouldn't we be? What's going on? What are you doing here, Sheriff? Where were you at 10.30 tonight? I was on my way home from the city. Oh, come on, Blaine. Who are you trying to fool? Would someone mind explaining to me what this is all about? I know you were up at the North Ridge and you fired three shots at us. No, I wasn't. Did anyone see you? Well, I can't tell you where I was at 10.30, but I can... Hey! But if you let me get into my wallet, I can prove where I was at 10.15. I got a speeding ticket going through Brigandville. It's 60 miles from here. Take it very easy. Ten fifteen p.m. Doing six to five and a forty in beautiful downtown Brigandville. Well, you have to watch out for Leonard. He's a terror on people speeding through his town. Well. If you won't be needing my services any further, I think I'll just go home and see what's left of the ball game. It was a headlamper. Conscience bothering you? How the hell do you think I could do something like that? Well, if it wasn't you, who was it? Okay, Andy. It's just me. I wanted to see that you were all right. Did they find out who it was? No. But we will. Come on. Let's tuck you back in. Are you going to marry Liz, father? How do you feel about calling me dad? Are you going to marry Liz? <laughs> do you want me to? Yes. Well, then you're going to have to put in a good word for me. Sleep well. Good night, dad. Good night, son. sleep. Neither could I. What happened? Blaine has an alibi. 
so it wasn't Blaine. Oh, I didn't say that. Why do you hate each other so much? Well, more than anyone, Blaine thinks that I killed Alicia. Why he thinks you married Alicia to get back at him? No. No, I loved her very much. I always loved her. Why do you think she killed herself? I don't know. She wasn't that kind of woman. She intended to live forever. Maybe she did just fall out of the window. What happened the night she died? She'd been to a party in the city. She came home drunk. I hated being around her when she was like that. She started in on me about how she'd married the wrong brother, how it was Blaine that she really loved. She must have been very confused. Yeah, I think she was. And I obviously didn't know how to help her. She could be very cruel, particularly when she was drunk. And that night, she told me that Andrew was not my son, that he was Blaine's. Maybe she was just trying to hurt you. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe she was telling the truth. Anyway, I stormed out, and those were the last words that passed between us. I couldn't deal with it. I shut myself down emotionally. And then you showed up. Suddenly, I had feelings again. You opened my eyes. I love you, Liz. Oh, I know I can never be anything like your husband, but don't you feel anything for me, anything at all? This is very hard for me to say. And don't. I don't think I ever loved Nick the way that I love you. And I found that hard to face. And he wasn't the only one carrying around a ghost. And if he can let go, so can I. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Morning, everyone. Mwah. Hi. Oh, could I have some eggs, please, Mrs. Brown? Hey. I'm hungry. Liz, um, if my father were to marry you, you'd be my mother, right? Well, that would depend on you. But you'd be willing to be? Well, you do realize that mothers don't take orders like nannies. I know. They give them. But it's because they love you. Mine didn't. My mother never loved me. Oh, I'm sure she did. Hey, you know what? I 
love you very much. Where are you going? I give up, Richard. You win. It's all yours. Last night was the last straw. Look, I need the money, so if you can raise it, buy me out. No, no, you're not leaving. You're not going anywhere till you tell me what you know about last night. You know it wasn't me. No, Blaine, I know no such thing. Richard, you're my brother. I may not like you, but I wouldn't shoot you. Why not? You'd have the house, you'd have your son. Seems reason enough to me. Richard, you got to believe me. I never slept with Alicia after she married you. Andrew is your son. God. She really heard us both, didn't she? Good evening, Mrs. Pram. Where are you off to? Dr. Keaton left me a note. He needs some things from town. Yes, Andy, what is it? It's Liz. She's in big trouble. What's wrong? It's Jillian. She she took her to the East Tower. Jillian? Andy, are you sure? Hurry, Dad. She's got a gun. A gun? Andy, I'm locked in. Get up here fast and let me out. I can't. I'm locked in, too. Dad, are you there? Yeah, Andy, I'm here. Now listen. Listen to me very carefully. The rope fire ladder is underneath your computer table. Get it out. Da Dad, I'm scared. Oh, that's all right. Brave boys get scared, too. But they still do what they have to. Do you understand? Yes. Good boy. And then do it. Do it, Andy. Do it for Liz.
Andy. Are you all right? Talk to me. Why are you doing this to me? I've asked him once. I'm not going to let that happen again. Please, Julian, let, let's just talk about this. Oh, there's nothing to talk about. Why don't you just move towards the window? Crazy. You'll never get away with it. I did before. And no one found out. I followed her back here from the party. She was drunk. And she was mocking me. She had Richard and she knew I loved him. It didn't take much to push her. Boy. Please, Jillian. Why are you doing this? Why? Why? Because you spoiled it all. All these years, I waited for him. And in three weeks, you have destroyed everything I worked for. But Richard will know that you did it. Well, maybe I don't care anymore. Jillian, stop this! No, 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 come on now. Put down the gun, put it down. You never loved me, did you? No, Jillian, I didn't. And I'm truly sorry if I ever gave you the impression that I did. All these years, I never wanted anyone but you. Oh, God. Oh, Got an idea, Richard. All we have to do is sell off 10 acres at the far end of the property. Pay off all our debts, fix up the old pile, and we live happily ever after. Do it. Well, that's it. You're not going to argue about it? I have no time to argue, Blaine. I am off on my honeymoon. Dad, I want to come on your honeymoon. Oh, no, no. Children are not allowed. Well, that's not fair. I put in a good word for you just like you asked. Didn't I, Liz? It's true. Ha! This is a conspiracy. It's outrageous. Well, you are going to need someone to go fishing with while I finish reading Jane Eyre. Mm -hmm. Of course you can. Come on, hop in. Yay! Are the bags in the car? Yeah. Blaine. Thanks for the car. What are brothers? Bye, Blaine. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, Uncle Blaine. Bye, Mrs. Bye. 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 Bye.